Hi, I'm Doug McKinley, and you're watching Adorama TV. For this segment, we're going to look at three of my previously published pictures. What I want to do is point out the technical aspects of each image, the problems I encountered getting those images, and how I overcame them. Adorama TV presents Stay Focused with Doug McKinley. So just before we get started, I just want to point out that I'm a professional reportage, documentary, and travel photographer, and I work alone, no assistance. And in that regard, I hope the following images will highlight some of the problems and pitfalls that you run into as a working pro. Recently, I was commissioned by the Sunday Times Travel Magazine to write and shoot a story about the coastal grizzly bears in the night inlet in British Columbia in Canada. So the first things I'm thinking about is weather and lens choice. Now this is the largest tract of coastal temperate rainforest in the world, and as such it rains a lot. So I've got to keep that in mind when I'm looking to keep my cameras safe and dry. It's also very, very remote, so the only way in is by float plane or by boat. And my personal transportation whilst we were there on the job was a one-man river kayak. So you can already imagine the problems. A bobbing kayak, choppy seas, pouring rain, leaden skies, and of course grizzly bears. I'm going to need a pretty high ISO in order to try and get the right shutter speed to mitigate the problem of the abnormals moving and also the problem of camera shake whilst I'm in the kayak. But I can't determine this until I get into position. So it's anywhere between 1000 and 1600 depending on how the cloud pattern is happening. Um, and this is giving me around 1 500th of a second which is just enough to stop the action of the bears on the shoreline and to stop the, uh, the problem of camera shake in the kayak. Now keeping the cameras dry was another problem. Now dry bags are a really great solution for this. They're nice and deep and they're light and easy to carry. And they're deep enough to carry a 300 millimeter f2.8 with a 1.4 converter attached and the camera body. So even with all these environmental factors that can cause you no end of grief if you're not careful, I still manage enough images to produce an eight page spread in the magazine. So this next picture is a little old now. It was shot in uh, a refugee camp on the outskirts of um, Herat City in western Afghanistan. It was a tense time and people were starving. But unlike a magazine where you have a number of pages to tell a story, for newspapers, you have to get it in one or maybe two shots. So doing this kind of work means traveling light. You don't want a big rucksack on your back bogging you down when you really need to run. So my bare bones kit here was a, uh, two bodies, one D's at the time, Canon 1D's, a uh, 35 millimeter 1.4, a 50mm 1.4, a 70-200-2.8, and a speed light. Now I'd spent a few days touring the camp with an interpreter. It was a big camp, 100,000 people, and it was very cold because it was December. This horrible wind kept blowing off this flat plain for miles around. But it wasn't until the last day that I was there that I managed to get this picture. On the outskirts of the camp there's this uh, graveyard, and I came across this man who was burying his three-year-old daughter who died the day before due to exposure. Now these are difficult pictures to take. No matter how seasoned or hardened you are, it's always troubling to take these kind of pictures. But as a working professional, you have to have an unflinching eye and tell the story anyway. Now with this man, I, uh, I talked with him through my interpreter to make sure it was okay for me to take this picture, a very intimate moment of him bearing his child. But what I chose to do here was I chose to step back a little bit with the, with the 70 to 200 millimeter uh, zoom lens because I wanted to suck the background in a little bit. As you can see, the big lenses tend to uh, diminish the depth of field a little bit, making things look a little closer. What I wanted to convey with this picture was that it wasn't a one-off. It wasn't one guy burying his daughter. It was a common thing in that camp at that time, that people were starving and dying of exposure. So the image tells that story. The hard shadows to me showed that it was a hard situation that these people were living in. I've got to travel to a lot of places in the world. Um, and one of the most memorable trips I've done in recent years was to uh, Utah in America. Now Utah is a fantastic place, it's a, it's a landscape photographer's dream. But my job was to um, focus on uh, the old um, movie sets and movie locations of the old westerns that starred John Wayne and directed by John Ford. John Ford was phenomenal at picking the right locations. So I was trying to tell the old west in modern terms and that only meant hanging out with some cowboys, and yes, they still do exist. I'm no horseman. Um, in fact, they scared the life out of me. Um, but I like to think, after a few days in the saddle, aching backside and all, that I at least gained a city slicker's level of competence. But for this image here, um, I was on foot. And now I had to ford this river 
uh, camera bag held high to try and get these guys coming across uh, to get the picture. Now the problem I had here was uh, the lead cowboy and his hat. Now again, it was that time of day thing. The sun was fairly high in the sky. It was August. We're looking hard, hard light here. Now I didn't want this guy to be lost in shadow, his face to be gone in some big black hole. So I needed to use a flash, a little fill-in flash in order to get this shot. And I was using a 24 millimeter lens, which presents its own problems. It's a great lens to get all that background in, but if you're not careful with it, you start to elongate your, your subjects. So it's a little bit of a uh, um, trying to get it right, picking the sweet spot. Now if I'd have waited another couple of feet, the horse's neck would have looked a lot longer than it is. If you look closely, it looks a bit stretched as it is. So the 24 mil lens gets me that great background, but you've got to be careful about stretching out your subjects. A little bit of fill flash, the flash powered down to about one eighth of, of, uh, of output is enough to get my light under his hat, light his face up without making him look like he's got too much light on him. So by the end of the job, I managed to get enough pictures to visually tell the story, which the picture editor and the editor of the magazine liked, managed to get me an eight page spread. So that's it for me, and I'm Doug McKinley for Adorama TV. You can join Adorama TV for more great videos. And don't forget, you can like, comment, or share on this video. And please come by the Adorama Learning Center for more great tips and tricks. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.